the Ridgeway actually begins in Avebury in Wiltshire. Um, quite a nondescript beginning, if I'm honest, for what is Britain's oldest alleged oldest road, and that ends in Ivanhoe Beacon in Bucks. In total, the entire walk's 87 miles, 140 kilometres, and I'll be wild camping all along the way. So we're here at the beginning of the Ridgeway, um, feeling completely ready at the minute. It's quarter past eight, Saturday morning, August the 25th, and um, I think that... I think it's the 26th, actually. Is it the 26th? <laughs> Sorry, I think... Who knows? It's irrelevant. I shall be back home, all going well, in around six, five or six days. 87 miles, so yeah. Thanks, my lovely Oscar. Go well! Goodbye! <laughs> There goes the beginning of the trail disappearing in the background and at this point I'm feeling rather nervous. I'm excited. I've been looking forward to this for um, quite some time. I originally planned to do this in 2020 I'm gonna say but lockdown happened. I was I'd, I'd set up a GoFundMe page. I was gonna do it for our local charity which is Oxfordshire Mind, a wonderful charity. Please donate anyone. And um, it didn't happen due to COVID restrictions, so it got put on the back burner. I did six to eight weeks training with the pack. By training, I mean I was going out twice a week for around seven miles before work in the morning wearing the pack. The pack weighed up to about 15 kilo when it was fully loaded. And that's including everything, food, water. I'll post a separate video another time with a breakdown of everything that I took. So yeah, I was hoping to do 15 miles a day and that plan was to walk for 45 minutes, rest for 15 minutes, thinking I'll take my time, get through, give my, give my feet a good rest. It's all well and good walking seven miles with a heavy pack, but if you're doing that for a full day over four days, I was imagining it to be a very different thing indeed. To help me with everything, my partner was meeting me once a day at various points that we would discuss en route. Um, and bring me food and water. This saved me having to traipse into town to look for supplies to resupply. It actually made my life so much easier. Let me just take a moment to thank you very much for that, Sophie. You are a wonderful, wonderful partner. I love you very much. And I couldn't have done with this without you. So I'm sorry, she, I, I couldn't have done this without you. So yeah, at this point, the weather looks good. I'm feeling full of enthusiasm. I'm really excited about what's coming. I'm really nervous about the um, physical impact that it might have on me. And I'm actually really nervous about having to wild camp. I've never, I did one practice wild camp. I've never wild camped before. The practice was actually up on the Ridgeway. It was really safe. I didn't know what it was gonna be like. And I really didn't know what it was gonna be like. 50% chance of rain, 11 o'clock. That's a bit of rain. As we come up to, um, I'm gonna say Burberry Castle, but I have no idea. It's some castle on that hill that I'm just about to walk up. I went, decided to take the bottoms of my trousers off. Legs dry quicker than cloth. And what happened when we was up on um, the Peak District was my trousers were, were soaking, were leaning against my socks and that acted as a giant wick because these are wicking socks and actually sucks all the water into my boots so yeah we've taken the bottom half of my trousers off hopefully the rain shouldn't be too long, it's clear over there but this big black cloud ominously following me so we've probably 11 km after that awful rain. It's been a real relief to be able to um, stop and find this little picnic table. Car park, possibly.
possibly toilets, possibly toilets. Wild men's urinals in the UK are usually absolutely minging though. So to be honest, I'd rather just go for a wee in a bush. It's a stink and they're pretty grimy places. We females that have never been into a man's urinal in the UK, particularly outside. <laughs> no. Without doubt, the best cup of tea with the best view ever. Hello little cows. Try and stroke you though. We just tell you how far we are. We are, 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 are about 16k in um, because I didn't start recording straight off the bat. So we're about 16k. Um, feeling a bit weary right now, so I'm really gonna really gonna take a 10-15 minute rest. I've just sat down, just heard some thunder. Um, the weather for now says where I am. Oh, the thunderclouds is gone. But there's a 40 and 30 percent chance of rain where I am. That's not too bad. That was better than what it was earlier with a, with a 60. So um, yeah, it's going to take a bit of food. Like I say, weariness, feet aching a little bit. Um, two thirds of today's mileage done. And yeah. Um, time is 20 to 4 actually. I think we're, we're at, without pulling my phone out of my pocket, I'm not, I'm not even sure how far I am. 20k, 18k, excuse me. There was a particularly steep hill as we've just walked up for the last half an hour, which really brought on a sweat because I couldn't take my waterproof off and there's a bit of rain so I was like do I take it off it's so hot do I get wet so sweaty so yeah holding up really well
So um, we've, just, we've just hit 20k actually, it's about 21k. Um, almost at my 15 mile day to live on that. Probably going to get beaten a little bit, which is fine. Um, my first reload is probably about half an hour away, which I'm quite glad because I am feeling quite fatigued, quite tired. It's 10 past 4. Um, so nice to get my boots off and just sit back. So I'm quite happy that um, Soph's going to be about half an hour just to sit here and recuperate. I can make myself a cup of tea this time. It'd be nice. At this point, I am feeling absolutely knackered, really wiped out, really fatigued. And finally, we'll make it to the end of the first day. Um, we stop at a place called Liddington Castle. It looks, it looks like the safest place for me to wild camp because I am really terrified about this. I've done 27K, so it's actually a mixture at this point. I'm quite scared to be wild camping in case somebody turfs me off. Never done it completely wild before. But on the other hand, I am so shattered that I just can't wait to get my head down in my tent. And what a view, looking out over Swindon for the evening, drawing in, it was a lovely summer's night. I felt really, really at peace to get to the end of day one. <sighs> wow, what a great start to the journey.